Hey there, Linus Tech Tips Forum, and welcome to a special unlisted video. And if you guys have not seen my video on the basement water cooling setup, or you guys have not been following the thread, then you might get a little confused by this video, but otherwise, watch on. So anyways, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you guys a very quick unlisted update video as to the finalization of my basement water cooling setup. I think I am on the final components for everything, and I've learned a lot through the setup, and the system is very successful. It does do a good job in cooling down my room upstairs, especially while I'm rendering a video because my upstairs, it just won't heat up at all. It would be nice because I do have the Sabertooth X79 motherboard if the water cooling chipset components for that still existed because then I could water cool my chipset and those heat up to like 80 degrees Celsius. But anyways, you know, that's enough of that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys the setup here. So turning around the camera here. So yeah, for those of you who have been following the thread from the beginning, you can see that this probably looks a fair bit different than normal. Specifically, the pump here and the reservoir are now two very different things than they were at the start of the project. Previously, that was that. I just used a giant bucket and I sort of like drilled a fitting in there and used JB Quickwell to put that in there. And this worked for a long time, but inside of that bucket, I was noticing the JB Quick Weld was like not looking super perfect. Now that just might be a property of how it looks underwater and whatnot and how it deals with water over time. But there was like one or two little flakes that were kind of ready to come off. They were loose and I'm like, well, maybe it's time to replace this. So instead I got a bucket like this, but I'm not using it anymore, but I wound up drilling fittings into the side of another bucket like this. And that, while it worked, the water weld, like uh, this water sealant thing that I had on it, doesn't work, doesn't bode well for a flexible bucket. So I've decided to go with an acrylic reservoir. Now, now that I've done the system for quite a while, a big fear of mine when I first started doing this project is that obviously, or at least the way I thought, is that when the system turned off, a lot of the water may wind up draining down the system. But now obviously I understand the laws of thermodynamics a little bit more and that air has to get in from the bottom and rise up to the system first. And if there's constantly water inside of these fittings right here and they're not allowing air in them, then that can't happen. It just can't. So yeah, I decided to get an acrylic reservoir and I have this little sucker filled up to 75% here and uh, the water level pretty much stays right there. And so this is a Fovea like two bay, five and a quarter inch, uh, you know, reservoir. And one thing that I also really like about it is, you know, the fact that you can use like standard fittings on the back here. But another thing is this sort of guard that's right here. You can kind of see it. The water flows directly into this sort of guard. I don't know if you can see that, but it flows directly into that so that it doesn't splash all over the place. Uh, it splashes a little bit right there, but like all of this splash on the top was from when I had it connected over here and the water just jetted out to the front and just made a giant tidal wave of water. Yeah. Anyways, so moving on from the reservoir, I now have a new pump as well, which I did update in the previous post. And uh, basically what this pump is about, if the camera would like, I don't know, maybe brighten up correctly, it's kind of not being too bright. Anyways, so, well, I'll give you guys the best look that I can. There we go. So this is, I think, the Coolance PMP500 pump. Now, the pump that I had beforehand was this little guy over here. This is the little giant 3MD QSC. This is the same pump that Linus had on the whole room water cooling project. And I thought an industrial pump like this was kind of required in, or, in order to get the head pressure because this pump specifically, I think, has like 18 feet of head pressure. But this thing grinds after about a week and it doesn't stop. And it's so loud that while going upstairs, I can actually hear it while passing by the basement door. So that to me was unacceptable. I don't mind the audibility of the system now because you can't hear it even if you put your ear to the door, so it's great. So anyways, I decided to stop using this pump and I opted for this one, which I found on a random forum post somewhere. This guy has 24 feet of head pressure. Now, I know that I don't really need any more than 10 feet of head pressure in my setup, but just to know that a pump like this even though it is like advertised as not being super quiet, but it doesn't matter because it's downstairs. So it's not meant to be inside of a computer system. And the, and the Noctua industrial PPC fans there actually uh, drown it out completely. And it's actually kind of cool. I only have two fans on in this setup because I only really need two. And this one is constantly cooling this pump right here. So kind of hilarious. But yeah, I mean, aside from that, um, I did intend on having two of these QD4 fittings, one on each side of the reservoir, but I don't really need it on this side. A, this tubing is way too short, 
you know, to really accommodate that comfortably. But B, when I wind up detaching this, if I need to drain the reservoir or whatever, I can actually tilt the back half of this up and the tubing, I can just disconnect it along the way. Kind of hard to explain, but it works and I'm happy with it. And it looks super awesome. It looks super tidy now as well. But underneath is kind of a different story. It's not really tidy under here. Uh, in order to power this pump, I required three amps of power and the Molex adapter that I had was only two amps. So I decided to use an old power supply that went out of commission because it starts to coil wine and I don't like that. But downstairs is not really a problem. But anyways, that is a 1050 watt HX Corsair power supply that has its uh, motherboard green and black pin permanently jump started so that it turns on whenever it receives power. And that supplies up to 88 watts on the 12 volt rail. So power is not a problem. So anyways, the fans and the pump itself are all powered through the system. Now, unfortunately, what I tried to do is I tried to use these uh, Noctua, like, what do you call it? These Noctua low noise adapters on the system. And unfortunately, it just doesn't, like, they don't work at all. Okay, let me go, let me try and open this here, yeah. These don't work on using just a fan splitter the way that I have it set up, hooked up to a Molex connection. So I might need to get a fan speed controller or just figure it out otherwise, but now I do have a four pin fan adapter thingy there. So I could probably figure it out, but you know, the fans aren't too bad anyways. I just kind of want the setup itself to be absolutely perfect. So yeah, it looks as if the acrylic reservoir is causing the, vid the video to wind up being very dark. But yeah, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Or I say comment section down below as if this is like a straight up YouTube video. Feel free to ask on the forum, guys. So yeah, anyways, hope you all enjoyed and thanks so much for watching.